Hey everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I sell residential homes here in the greater Toronto area. And during this video today, I'm gonna to answer the very commonly asked question, is it the right time to buy a condominium in the greater Toronto area? First though, do click subscribe, give the video a like. If you're considering buying or selling, then call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671-5218. And let's go ahead and answer this very commonly asked question. The answer is it really depends. There are a number of different type of purchasers out there. There are investors looking to flip. There are investors looking to hold on to a property long term uh, for cash flow. And then, of course, there are buyers that will be using the property as their own personal residence, whether they are a first time buyer or they're somebody who is selling a property in order to move into a condominium. And of course, the reason I'm making this video is because in case you haven't heard yet, throughout the pandemic, condo prices have been plummeting. And in October 2020, if we average out all condo sales that were reported on the MLS, the average sale price was $622,122. And if we go back pre-pandemic to February 2020, the average price was $666,358. So we know that condo prices are lower and over the past few years, they've really been just going up. And furthermore, the average days on market for condominiums in February 2020 was 16 days, whereas in October 2020, the average days on market was 22 days. And what this means is this is how long a property would take to sell from the initial time that it comes on the market. Generally speaking, we found in the greater Toronto area that when the days on market is below 14, that's a sign that there's a lot of bidding wars going on where properties are being sold above the asking price. And there's a lot of agents that are artificially pricing properties and doing things like listing them at $4.99 and they sell at $5.50. If you're a buyer in the greater Toronto area, then you probably know what I mean over the past few years. This has been very common, but not now. An important disclaimer for this video is that I personally believe values will go up throughout 2021 and so for that reason keep that in mind of course when we refer to investors as we will later in this video so this type of market is best for those first-time buyers assuming that the, this first-time buyer they have a good job they have stable income and it's such that they're planning of course to live in the property and use it as their own personal residence versus rent it out to a tenant i would say it's the best time to buy prices are lower, you have a lot of selection, really couldn't be any better. However, though, if you are a buyer that is needing to sell a property first in order to buy, then it's a little bit of a different circumstance. I would say if you're coming from a house and you need to sell and then buy, then it's a perfect scenario because if you don't know um, house values, so freehold properties, their values have significantly gone up over the past year, whereas condo markets, they've dropped. So really couldn't be much better. However, if you are currently owning a condominium and you're looking to sell, and maybe buy another condominium, perhaps you're upsizing or you're downsizing, then it really just depends on your specific complex in your area, how easy it is to sell your condo and then purchase. But all things being considered, I would highly recommend that you do go ahead and sell your condo first before you do go ahead and buy. Because what's so is if you are listing your condo, then you're already in a somewhat saturated market where it could take a lot of time to sell. So you wanna make sure that you can sell your property and then you're able to choose the terms as far as the move out date, which will give you sufficient time in order to buy a property, which meet your preferences. Okay, but what about if you're an investor? Well, from my experience, there's two types of investors that we most commonly meet. There is those investors that are looking to buy and hold long term, just essentially keeping a tenant there and collecting rental income from the property. And then there's those investors that go ahead and they flip, meaning that they buy a unit and then they sell it, you can say within the next two to three years. Now, in my opinion, if you are looking to flip and you're like me and believe that values will come up over the next couple of years, then I think now is a really good time. It's really not such that condos have lost their overall appeal. It's just that right now, um, a lot of the times it's very inconvenient for buyers to go ahead and look at condos. They don't feel necessarily safe or comfortable. So it's just a matter of time until values do go ahead and surge upwards. However, if you are looking to flip and you're looking to do work to a property, do consider it will be a big headache for most of you as doing renovations in a condo is not as easy as doing it with a house. And in a lot of cases to get labor and to get material, it does cost more than it did pre-pandemic. All right, but what about the category of buyers which are looking to buy it as an investment as a rental property? And this is where it really depends because what so is it's probably not going to cash flow. And here's what I mean. If we take an average one bedroom, one washroom property downtown going for let's say $520,000, 
the average rent is going to be somewhere around nineteen hundred, maybe two thousand dollars. And if you take all your expenses into consideration, for example, your monthly mortgage bill, your utility costs, your monthly tax bill, and your maintenance fees associated with that particular condo building, then what's so is the rental income is probably not going to offset all those costs, and you're going to have to pay. A couple hundred dollars out of pocket in order for you to hold on to the property if you have enough cash reserves in the bank in order for you to be able to cope with this then it's okay because what will likely happen is the rent market rate will go up within the next couple of years and therefore you'll be in a position where you are cash flowing because that's when you'll start building equity in the property and then after the next five to ten years you'll notice that the value will appreciate so significantly that you'll have enough equity in the property where you can refinance perhaps you can take the equity out of that property purchase another rental property and start collecting passive income and like robert kiyosaki says real estate investing even on a very small scale remains a tried and true means of building an individual's cash flow and wealth so i think it's a great idea for investors to pick up a property now sure it may rent for a little bit less than what it typically would rent for although if you look at the grand scheme of things and the benefit long term it definitely makes sense as most wealth is created long term not short term and that's the very reason why i recently switched brokerages over to exp realty if you're a real estate agent that's come across this video i appreciate your support and if you're wondering about eXp, you want to learn about the stock ownership, the ability to build passive income while using our online office, then call me, call me, call me. My number is 416-671-5218. And if you're looking for property on realtor.ca and it's not necessarily suiting your needs, maybe you're not finding the right property, then you'll likely find my website, torontorealestatenow.com, a very useful resource. I appreciate your support. Do click the subscribe button. I think it's somewhere over here. Give the video a like, comment below, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.